7 FM and 710 Keel, Robert J. Wright and Aaron McCarty, and guests on Keel Heard Via, the Jack Spring Electric Keel Newsmaker Hotline. Louisiana Congressman Mike Johnson is here. Mr. Mike, welcome back. Thank you for taking time for us, sir. Hey, Robert, always a pleasure, even under these circumstances. I, I hardly know where to begin with the Afghanistan situation. I guess the first question would be, uh, what might you know that we don't know? Give us your... Give us a little insight. Your your take on the situation. Mine is good heavens. Why did this happen? It didn't have to. No, it didn't have to. This this may become the worst and I think most consequential foreign policy national security disaster in our history. It it is escalating now. It will be a problem for weeks, months, years to come. You know, the the president. Um, he just went in. He established an arbitrary withdrawal date from Afghanistan, but as everyone knows now, he didn't establish or follow any apparent plan on how to do that. So here's here's the latest updates. I mean, we're following this hour by hour. So the Taliban right now, as you know, has surrounded Kabul International Airport. That's the only place that left to get people out of the country. And the Taliban is, is beating people on the way when they try to get to the airport. They of course, are, are, are wielding weapons that are made and paid for by American taxpayers because in Biden's infinite wisdom, we left all that behind. 17 people died in a stampede last night uh, because they were trying to get away from these Taliban fighters. We know at least one woman has been beaten uh, for not uh, wearing a burqa. we, we got 15,000 Americans, uh, somewhere north of 80,000 interpreters and allies who have trusted and assisted us. All those people have been left behind in the country. And they've been told by the State Department to shelter in place. I mean, it's just unbelievable, and, and the, the tragedy goes on and on. Mr. Mike, I had said a couple of seconds ago, and I want you to expound on something you said. You said the most consequential foreign policy disaster in a long time, but I've been telling people, and, and I, I said, and I hate to say this, I said, go watch the movie The Killing Fields. It's anybody who was left in that country, any Afghan who who lended us the slightest bit of assistance, their lives are in danger. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands. Yeah, there's there's a, a ton of people who, who will, look, a lot of innocent people are going to die because of this disaster, okay? That's just a blunt way to say what we're facing right now. We're going to wind up having 9,000 American troops back, boots on the ground, back there just to try to get people to the airports, right? But even if they're able to clear an artery, uh, to, to try to get people to the airport, you know, the Taliban is, is infamously disorganized. They don't have great structures of command and control. So you've got all these young men who are just, you know, self-described, self-identified uh, jihadis running around the country. If they see an American trying to leave their shelter in place abode and get to the airport, they're going to be in jeopardy. And, and they already know and have targeted who our allies are of, of the, the native folks there. Look, the Reagan doctrine we all used to talk about and that we espouse today is that we, we maintain peace through strength. The, this, the other side of that is, is that is because weakness invites aggression. And you're talking about a consequential event that will to be with us for the remainder of our lifetime. China and Russia and our other adversaries are mocking us for this right now. They're, they're, they're making alliances with the Taliban, of course, and they're going to set up shop in Afghanistan, as well as al-Qaeda and these other terrorist organizations. We're coming up on the 9-11 anniversary. I mean, this is not a game. We've got a wide open southern border. We know that some of these dangerous people have come across that border. Who knows that they have cells set up now in the country? I mean, it could not be a worse case scenario than it is right now. Mike, will any forces from Barksdale be involved in getting folks out of Afghanistan? Have you, have you gotten any information on that? We, we don't yet. I mean, mostly it's the C-17s, the cargo uh, planes that are used for these purposes. You saw the photo of the 640 or so uh, Afghans that crammed into that, that first uh, infamous flight out. Um, you know, the, the B-52s are, are, are weapons planes, right? They're mm -hmm. to drop bombs. Right? Maybe we should have done that before now, but um, I, I don't know that they'll be involved at this stage, but we'll wait and see. The Taliban has also said, and, and I'm very skeptical when I say this, invited women to join their government and be part of, of, of our future. Do you buy that? Is that hogwash? No, no one does. And, and you don't have to take our word for it or our, you know, our, our intuition on this. You talk to the, the, the women who have been in that country, have dealt with these uh, regimes before. I mean, this is all just a facade. 
uh, everyone expects that they will have the same ill treatment they had before. These women are, are terrified uh, for their lives and their livelihood, for their daughters. And, you know, this it's, it's just an untenable situation. And the reason we went into Afghanistan 20 years ago was to try to make sure that we could root out al-Qaeda and these terrorist organizations that set up. That was their effectively the home base. That's where they hatched all these plans to export terror around the world. Of course, we're the number one target, us in Israel. And they would like to do it again. Now they're going to be empowered to do that. Um, it didn't have to happen this way. No one wanted us to stay in Afghanistan forever. But when President Trump talked about pulling out, his their, their plan was very methodical. Pompeo, Secretary of State, they were going to leave at least two military installations open until at least all of our critical personnel were evacuated from the country. None of that happened here, and it is totally inexcusable. Mr. Mike, uh, let's talk about that for just a second or two more, because the Biden explanation and the media's defense of the Biden explanation is, this is Donald Trump's fault. We're just following Donald Trump's bad plan. Donald Trump's lousy plan just unraveled, and nothing could be further from the truth, could it? Well, exactly. I mean, first, Biden and his administration have literally reversed everything President Trump did or planned, everything, except this, supposedly, right? This is the one thing he couldn't do, he couldn't change. It's a joke. They're not following the Trump plan. They took that, whatever they had left, and put it in the shredder because it was the opposite of what this would have become, has become. And and right now you see the blame game going on. You know, Biden's blaming you know Trump and everybody else. Meanwhile, the, the Pentagon and the totally incompetent Biden State Department and the intel community are all pointing fingers at each other. And you have leaks from from the intelligence community coming out over the overnight. Uh, they're saying, hey, you know. Not our fault. We gave the White House every indication that this would happen. We told them what would happen. Everybody, my, my fifth grade son could have seen that this would happen, right? We knew the situation there. Everybody did. Biden ignored it for political purposes, and now people are going to die. Congressman Mike Johnson, thanks for your time, sir. Okay.